Anyways, I am your host, Get Good Fox. This is State of Decay 2 in the beta, with the beta infestations indeed. And today, we have a plan. That's right. So, if you didn't see last episode, um, last episode is once again available on the VODs channel. So you can catch up if you wish. So just go down to this link here and you'll see the VODs channel, episode 7 right here, is the the latest episode. And I, they typically get uploaded the next day. But last episode, what we did was destroy most of the play cards. And the reason I destroyed them is because they kept awakening. They were awakening without any without any provocation. They were just waking up because they felt like it. And as long as the play guards are awake, they start mass producing their infestations. And I don't want that. I don't want them to mass produce um, infestations. That's, that's what we would like to avoid. So as a result, I went out and I treated the problem at the source. The way you deal with infestations is not really with the outpost. The way you deal with the infestations is to uproot the plague hearts themselves and destroy them. So we destroyed the lion's share of them. There's not a whole lot left. But with the ones that are remaining, I do want to try a new idea. And that's exactly what I'm going to try today. So what I'd like to do is see, can we box in, can we basically, can we locate where the remaining play guards are, and if they are clustered together, can we lock them down with outposts and kind of blockade them in there, and in that, and in doing that, would we no longer need to, would we no longer be bothered by any infestations? That is my current, that, that is what I currently am wondering. Okay, so step one is, as usual, to consider the situation at the base. I need to push the button. Um, I don't think we have anything to install that's relevant. Well, maybe that. Now, what we do have is the lounge, which is... Oh, we also have the game console, so we definitely want to install the game console. And, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and install the salvage furnace, and that's because I want to start smelting things a little more effectively. With the game console, that is going... The game console and the lounge combined should resolve all or most of our uh, morale concerns, as well as begin to train us up. So that is a big, big win. And the lounge is now fully upgraded as well. Now, we, do, we also need a... A trade depot. Let me see if I have a trader though, as a leader. Warlord, builder, sheriff, builder, builder. Okay, so we don't have a warlord, unfortunately. Okay, so what we're gonna do in the meantime is I'm not sure if this play if this infestation is gonna disappear on its own, but what we should do now is cargo. So let's go ahead and prep this character. Um, actually, this is fine. I'll take one cure, one cluster of stamina items. I don't know if this character is going to get tired or not. And um, because we're going to go recover a lot of cargo, let's go take the uh, a more cargo specialized vehicle out for a spin. And we can also transfer this over. This. Oh, no, we can put that in. Our cargo capacity is 55, so, you know, we can put some of this in for sure. Now, as you know, to loot play guards, we need to have eight inventory slots free. And that will allow us to begin excavating these. We'll wait until daytime, and then we'll begin figuring out what we're going to do with these infestations, or these play guards that are generating the infestations. Were they waking up, uh, Liquid Courage asked, were they waking up based on community prestige? I don't know. They just oh, they just woke up one day. The, the game did not explain why they woke up. They just did. Um, and it was also, I've had other Lethal Zone players tell me that they've had the same experience. One guy has beaten multiple beta lethal zones since it has come out and he has said that every single beta lethal zone he has played 
resulted in the play guards eventually waking up on their own with no provocation. So they could be, maybe it's a time-based thing. But I, I don't know the answer. That's a lot of stuff. We're not really here to fight, so we don't have to. We'll drop this home. Someone has a favor to ask. The only cure. We can do that one. It would be nice if we could upgrade some of our allies, but, you know, one thing at a time. Uh, let's go ahead and let's just keep moving. This thing has plenty of cargo. This is one of the vehicles that has had its cargo upgraded. Its capacity is upgraded. And so instead of carrying six items in its trunk, it now carries eight. I would like to get, um... I would like to get a Vandito. I'm told the, the Vandito has a mighty nine carry capacity, which would be quite impressive, I believe. So, um... Bernstha says that she was watching another YouTuber who was really talking up the update. Yeah, I mean, um, look, I'm not going to blame people for... Okay, so as a content creator, your goal is to grow. And as a content creator, most people think that the way... Most people believe the way you grow is to get other people to endorse you. You know, other people to shout out you. You know, there's so many people who are like, oh, I can't, well, you know, maybe uh, maybe PewDiePie will give me a shout out and I'll become big. Or Mr. Beast will, like, find me and, like, you know, and then I'll become famous. Most people, basically, most content creators are hoping someone else will do the work for them. When the truth hey guys, is that really the only here. realistic way to grow as a content creator is to just make good content. That's the only way to do it. Sometimes it takes a while. Uh, some people, like Am Ambiguous Amphibian, uh, it took him three years of experimentation and doing it wrong until he kind of hit the winning formula. So it's like, I don't hold it against people who kind of just have no criticisms of the game. Or their criticisms are very, like, weak. Like, they don't, like, really tell you what... They they, they, they don't often want to rock the boat. And so I, I understand why people are like that, but at Get Good Fox, uh, that's never going to be the case. Where do you refuel this thing? First, it would help if I had fuel. Yeah, I will always be someone who, if I like it, I will tell you that I like it. If I don't like it, I will tell you that I don't like it. And if it hurts people's feelings that I don't like it, well, you know what? Sometimes feelings got to get hurt. That's that's the way I see it. And because, like, that's how I built my, uh, ooh, look, they're all right next to bit. each other. Okay, so we are, we're about to get two okay, people my, upgraded. So someone asked me the question earlier. Uh, why do I have so many enclaves? Well, I'm going to show you one of the reasons right here. So by completing this quest, it's a very easy quest. All I got to do is deliver them a plague here, and I've got I can I can always make more. Our supplies are just fine. We are going to get ourselves an enclave bonus, and every single enclave can give us a bonus. And some of them are very good. Some of them aren't very good, but some of them are very good. And if there's more than one in there, <laughs> well, fuck that place. Not worth the trouble. So, as you can see, a plague art has awakened. You see that that right there? And um, that plague art is nowhere near me. In fact, I don't even know where it is. We can actually look on the map and you'll see that I, I don't even know where that plague art is. It's nowhere near me. So that one basically woke up because it felt like it. That's, that's, what, that's what it means. There. That plague art just decided to awaken. 
Now, um, and how do I know? Well, now how do I know it's not near me? Because you don't see any plague territory. If I go over here, you'll see that there's red icons indicating plague territory. You will not see any red icons anywhere else. So like they can't be, they, it's got to be a plague arch somewhere in here. And there's only like five of them remaining. And I have a feeling all five of them are there. Anyways, let's go yep. ahead and see what we get from this guy. Here's your samples. I appreciate that. So he gave us lending sure a hand thing. labor bonus. That one is. Don't let the Zeds get you. I mean, I can use it for now. Like, I I might find use for it for now, and that's because um, a lot of our labor will get eaten up. But that's not a super good bonus. I will definitely be getting rid of this enclave in the future in order to make room for more of them. Let's go ahead and call in more enclaves if we can. We'll see if we're at the at the maximum limit. Another thing is, um, you know, I'm not, I don't want to like toot my horn too much. I don't want to act like I'm clairvoyant or like psychic or something. I do feel like one of my qualities is that despite being a high level player of State of Decay, I feel like I'm still in touch with the Standard Zone player. Like I understand what the Standard Zone player is going to enjoy, what the Standard Zone player is going to be frustrated with. So even though, like, basically, I feel like I can still relate to the standard zone player, despite being, like, a high-level State of Decay lethal zone player. And I think that's another reason why a lot of my ideas resonate with people. And not just my ideas that are constructive in the sense of, like, what would be a cool thing to add, but whenever I criticize the game, a lot of people agree with it as well. And I think that's the reason why. Yeah, absolutely, Crimson Mirage Drake. It's like, I, I at least can have, I have a use for it. I can do something with it. That's the main thing. Okay, let's see what bonus we get from these guys. Would it be a good idea to reuse Reveal Plague Arcane? Probably not, because I, I'm i very confident that they're the ones in here. And it costs a lot of money to do that, so I just don't want to do it. Here's the Plague Cure for them. Let's see what bonus okay, we get. Dead. Okay. Kate doesn't want to tell me. Uh, Off-site ammo storage. So alive. that one we're going to shut down immediately, because this one sucks. Hey, you. Hey, All you. of these guys have pretty smelly upgrades. Okay. Let me see if there's anything I want to buy. Um, I'll buy a repair kit. I'll buy the brass collector just for collection's sake. This. Now I'm going to go ahead and recruit this guy. For everybody, but you've got and then I'm going to enlist special. them. So by recruiting him, I now got rid of this enclave. And since I got rid of the enclave, I might be able to call a new one in. And what I want to do now is let's see if he's a traitor. He's not a traitor, so oh, what I'm going to hey. do is I'm going to take all of his property, and now I'm just going to exile him immediately. And this is how we clean out the infestations we don't need. Or not the infestations. This is how we get rid of I've the enclaves said. that we don't need. But you need to go. Yeah? Well, fuck you too. As you can see, he's overjoyed at the news. Useful, I guess. Uh, that's a, another thing, Burns. To, uh, is um, some people wonder why don't I show up on other people's shows? Like why why don't I appear on um, why don't I appear on Family Undead Lab shows, for example? Like, I've been invited, but I never go and. A big reason for that is because I I kind of want to keep companies a little bit at arm's length because, you know, if you get, like, buddy-buddy, you're going to feel bad. Like, if you want to say, hey, you know, I don't like this, I think it's bad, I don't think it's good, well, it's gonna you're going to have this kind of nagging sensation like, man, I'm really, like, trashing the work of these people that I've gotten kind of friendly with. And that's why I don't do it because I, I don't want that doubt in my mind. 
Like, I don't want that gnawing doubt that I'm, like, you know, basically attacking people that I've become friendly with. And that's why you haven't seen me on any of Undead Lab's streams. Not because I haven't been invited. I've been invited many times. I've been invited to numerous events, but I just never accepted them. Okay, so we don't have any more quests in that regard, but what we can do is continue looting all of these play guards, which would be a great idea. Look look how many of them we've got. Um, I think what I want to do is move Outpost 2. Let's move it inside of here. To this one right here. The Firehouse Tavern. Um, okay, so let's do, let's remove Outpost 2, and then we'll go claim that one, because, like, there's just a ton of play guards there, and we'll be able to get a ton of stuff. Interesting, a Red Talon mission. Not super enthusiastic about doing that, though. All the Red Talon mission is going to do is give me one of their weapons. Right here. Now, we could try the outpost function here, too. Like, I might be able to put the outpost function to use. Okay. The Let's see. Uh, like, wait, this go. doesn't count as a food location? Okay, I guess I wasted... Okay, let, let's use the quick... Now that we claimed it, we might as well be able to quick loot it. I thought the tavern was going to count for food, but I guess not. Lift this. There's nothing left to salvage here. Yeah, I, I agree, Heath. I, I think another evidence is that, like, I don't attack the game that frequently. Like, it's not like a regular thing of mine. Hello, freaky zombie. Okay, so I guess we're gonna release outpost number two again. A little bit of a waste of money there, but you know. Oh well. So another play guard has awakened. Once again, that must be a play guard that's just out in the middle of nowhere over there. And it, once again, it is awakening, I think, just because it feels like it. Um, some people are saying that must be a bug. I don't think it's a bug. It happens very methodically. Like, it doesn't happen erratically. It, it seems to be an intended thing that the play guards are simply programmed to eventually wake up one way or another. <laughs> Oh, I thought I could get him there. I wish it hit behind me, to be totally honest. Oh, come on, guys. Will you just leave me alone? I just want to capture this outpost, honestly. Let me see if I can capture this outpost. Broken in a hurry. I can't catch my breath. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, the work's done, and this outpost is ready for use. And with just a bit more effort, it could really be something. <laughs> Let's see here. So what we're going to do is activate one of the abilities for a change. Traps on.
So what the traps should do is begin neutralizing all of these zombies nearby, and that should mean we are able to loot this a little more in peace. I lift this. I mean, what one would hope that's what it would do. That's that. Next place. Let's go ahead and patch ourselves up. Two bandages ought to do the trick. Okay, so... I did not think the play guards would awaken this quickly, so I might move my plans ahead a little bit. The plan was to try to block the play guards in, and I'm gonna see if we can do that. What I wanted to do was produce an outpost to see can, now that we have more or less located the play guards, like we know basically where they are, can I create like a net to capture any of the infestations that are trying to come through? And then I can, even though all of them are waking up, maybe then I can just kind of, you know, once again, ignore them and go do what I want to do, rather than be constantly pressured into destroying these infestations as Undead Labs wants me to. That is like one of my biggest criticisms of this, is that I want to do something different. I don't want to kill Plaguegars right now. It's, I'm not in the mood to do that. And because State of Decay 2 is an open world sandbox zombie survival simulation, that's what it was designed to do. It was designed in a way where you would choose uh, how would you survive. That was the big the big slogan of State of Decay was how will you survive? Play zombies in all directions. Better be careful. And uh, by asking how will you survive, it was it was basically saying like what would you do in the zombie apocalypse? And that's what I really don't like about this update. This update takes away the whole question of what would you do in the zombie apocalypse, and it replaces it with the question of how will you play Undead Labs game? Like how will you do what Undead Labs tells you to do? Because that's these the problem with these play cards and these infestations is that they really, really stiff arm what you want to do. Like you need to drop what you're doing and do something about these infestations. And in this playthrough, the, the, the infestation mechanic has just totally dominated the playthrough. Like, the... The Awakening play guards have completely changed the way I would normally play the game. And it's in a way that I, I don't think it's good. I don't enjoy the way that I am now being pressured into playing the game. That's the issue that I'm having. Hostile enclave. Interesting. So what we're doing is just kind of locating the play guards to see like where they are. Once I find out where they are, I'm going to make an educated guess in how I will neutralize... I, I, or how I will pick an outpost to try and block these infestations. Yes, if you kill it, absolutely burns. If you kill a play guard, the death of the play guard will cause the other ones to awaken. I'm just going to assume that these are all going to wake up. Like, there's no way around it. And like I said, the only way to stop them yeah, would be to now. kill them. But the thing is, I don't want. Them. Like, what if I want to do something else? Safe. What if, what if I'm not in the mood to kill the play guards? Before, I could kill the play guards more at my own pace, which is great because that's the way the game is supposed to work. The game is supposed to be, a, it's supposed to work in a way where potential outpost in town. You, you, how do you survive? It's supposed to be very open-ended, but now I have no choice but to like take a drastic action against these play guards. And I, that's what the experiment for today is going to be. We've almost revealed all the buildings. I think one of the worst parts, though, is that um, after I kill all these play guards, you still don't get... Re so the play guards generate the infestations, right? Well... The thing that really stinks is after you kill all the play guards, you don't even get relief from the infestations because 
then they just start coming from off the map. They just start generating anyways. Okay, I think we've located all of the buildings. We have one more building there, but let me see. Let me count them all. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, those are all five. So let's see what direction they want to move in. They're moving in a weird direction. Like, this is not the direction I would expect them to go in. They should be moving towards my base. Oh. It's a juggernaut. Let's get back in here. That's why you want to, um... You want to, like, look before you get out. That was one of my own rules that I didn't follow. And the thing is, I don't want to kill all of the infestations either. And I don't want to kill them all because we're still trying to experiment with them. So it looks like to box all of these infestations in, I'm going to need two outposts. I'm going to need one in this area, and then I'm going to need one on the other side to box them all in. Let's see if I can do that. Or maybe I'll do it the other way around. Let's try over here first. Because that's, that's the direction the infestations want to go in. They don't seem to want to go north. They want to go uh, the other direction. So we'll see if I can claim an outpost and then maybe block them. Then what I'll do is kill the existing ones. Let me see if I can sneak past. Yes, I can. All right, let's go see if there's an outpost we can claim around here. Yes, we can claim this um, seconds auto. Don't pull me out, you jerk. Oh, no, we can shoot. This is even better. Even better. A food outpost. Okay. Can't let that one get back up. Um, yes. Okay, I have a good feeling about this one. So let's go ahead and release outpost number four. Yeah. I like this place. We can use this. Okay. And then Work's what we'll do is activate is outpost number use. four. But as long as it is, we could spend some time and make it even better. And we're gonna see if outpost number four is capable of Jackpot. blocking up these infestations. Now we will need to destroy the infestation that slipped through the net ahead of time, but you know, one thing at a time. So this guy is kind of annoying. You see how this guy has kind of freed himself? This is what I mean by I, it's possible that I might need to... Um, I, what I might need to do is... I might need to kill this particular play guard so that I can claim this. To block him in here and block him in there. So as once again, the play guards are just awakening. You know, it's just time. I, I'm certain this one will eventually. Like you see, like, I, I think you'll agree that this does not seem random. They're awakening at a very steady pace that very much shows intention. It does not seem random. I feel like if they were randomly awakening, they would not just be awakening one after the other. Remember, this started last stream. So this is a continuation from last stream. They were kind of awakening once every seven to 10 minutes. So I do not think it's a bug. I believe, because people say, oh, that's just a bug. I think that is the incorrect assumption. Okay. Let's play, who are we playing as? Deep, let's switch the south. All right, so Seth is our other powerhouse character. We're gonna need him to destroy the play guards. And um, I don't have any other good tools besides this hand grenade. 
to kind of speed up the process, but not not that big a deal. Where is my sledgehammer? Yeah, I think they have some kind of a timer. I don't know the conditions for it, like Crimson. I just believe that something does... I believe they do have a condition that eventually... Basically, and once again, I really don't like that because... It once again takes away the idea of... If you want... People like, oh, it just means you need to play stealthily. Well, maybe... Maybe that would be true if... The, so if not for the shit. fact that the play guards can just awaken themselves. What is that loud sound, Ants Jimbly Puff? That would be my outposts. And they can't destroy these, so I'm gonna have to run them over real quick. Nice. I spotted a feral. Okay, so let's go torch this infestation. Did we lose track of the other one? I think we lost track of the other one. Mr. Gregos, how's it going? Okay, so let's go destroy that one real fast. Let me see, did they get rid of the ability to scout for infestations? Oh my god, it costs two fuel to scout all infestations? Wow. Before it just cost a little bit of influence, now it costs fuel. Even worse. Unbelievable. That's an ent that's like a that's like one tank of fuel there. A horde is moving towards Big Daddy Auto Repair. Where is, is this the Big Daddy? No, that's the fruit stand. Okay, let's go torch this. As you can see, the infestations are sabotaged by their own um, character types, like their own zombies sabotage themselves. I think that's all the armored zombies. No, we still got this one. Um, I kind of want to loot this building actually. Looks like it might have be a might be a decent source of um, building materials. Oh, that zombie got up in a hurry. I'm gonna fucking drop. Oh. Okay, so w I wish I knew where that one infestation went. I don't know if we just lost it somehow. Or if something else happened to it. I don't know where it went. We'll come back for it later. Let's go over here. Let me turn this on. Actually, no, we were gonna boost our morale. Okay, so that's this is where the um, the extra got the extra labor we picked up is gonna come in handy because we lose four labor for movie night, but then we gain three labor. So this is they're actually they're gonna help us 
do movie night. So basically, I need their help in order to watch movies more effectively, is what it means. Which I think is pretty epic. Can I call anyone are you in? Safe out there? Oh, I can. All right, so we are able to get another person in. Let's go and refuel. Okay, we're gonna need like uh, we're gonna need John Follower to help me out on this play guard. Uh, and I am running out of fuel. That's not a good sign. That's another big problem with these outposts is that they are gonna eat up your fuel like crazy. Do I have anything else to smelt? Yes, I do. Let's keep that going. All right, so our new allies are... Okay, they're inside here. That's fine. We'll go... We'll cut through here, and we'll get their attention. We'll destroy this, and then we'll claim that refueling station. And then we should have boxed the plague arts in, which is the If I take the out the nearest plague heart, this should clear up. Unfortunately, we will then be taxed basically one rucksack of ammo, one rucksack of fuel per day. But um, it's, a, it's an experiment. We'll see how it works. Wolf96 subscribes as a T1. Thank you so much, good sir. He asks, have you subscribed to the Get Good Fox VODs channel? Good question. Yeah, that's right. The VODs channel, like, I do need some help uh, pumping it up to a thousand subs, so if you have a moment, please subscribe to the Get Good Fox VODs channel. An easy way to help out the Fox Republic for free. Okay, we got ourselves John Follower. Oh, I do need building materials, I will buy that. Hey there, make yourself at home. Mind the creeper over there, okay? <laughs> Good. All right, now we're going to squish this thing. Also, look at that. The um, There is... The sun is coming back up, so all of this is kind of lining up. Which is exactly what I want. Oh, you want a link? Uh, the link is right here. All you got to do is go down here and click VODs, and I will link it in the Discord or in the chat real fast. That is the, and basically, what is the point of that website? That, or that YouTube channel has all of the streams. If you miss a stream, go there and you can catch up on any of the streams. Like, it is a channel purely dedicated to archiving my streams, essentially, because the streams eventually get deleted on on Twitch. Twitch streams are not eternal, essentially. Right here looks pretty good, because they can't get on my hood or my door. If it ain't the heat, it's the humidity. Now, the play guard is always in the same spot here, so I'm just going to go right here. One, two, three, four. Oh, the ferals here. Nope, you stay away from me. Yep, just distract them for me. That's what I need you to do. I said distract them for me. Not get attacked or not let them attack me. I said distract them. Okay, let me see if I can get in there and finish this play guard off. Shouldn't have a lot of health remaining. Hey, 
There we go. Okay, so next we're gonna go claim that. John Follower doing a great job of distracting the zombies. And I'm gonna remove... We'll figure out which outpost I'm gonna drop when we get there. Um... Oh, behind us. I have had some followers live a very long time. I have had a follower survive six Plagueers before. It was very, very impressive. Okay, we're gonna have to take out the rest of these guys. Alright, so I'm gonna get rid of... Okay, good. So she's distracting them. I want this one here. Ow. Um, I guess we're going to drop number three. Now we can take this one. Guys, guys, we got this. Goddamn and let's go ahead and um, this place could really shine. Nope, loot. Nothing. Okay, so now what we've done is we should have surrounded basically Lundergard because like this part, this part of town is known as Lundergard. So I believe we have surrounded Lundergard with outposts, meaning it shouldn't be possible for them to break through. I don't think it is, at least. Because anytime they try to go through, they should get destroyed by... the outpost. Which means we shouldn't have to worry about infestations, but we are doing it at the cost of losing a decent bit of resources per day. So it's not... It's not the perfect solution. Uh, Burn says we should have a we should have a prediction of with the points for every oh for how long people can survive. Yeah, I mean maybe I'll do that next time to see how how many play guards someone can survive. Okay, another play guard has awakened, but once again, you know we're, we we're kind of we're, we're expecting that. You know we're not surprised by this. Um. Oh, I thought that was a screamer. Let's make some more ammo. Repair, repair. Uh, Throw that, that back. Loader looks nasty. Also, I'm pretty sure I used my plague cure, so I gotta replace it. I'll build a second one. Okay. Alrighty, so here's the plan. Now that we have that box then, our new our new question is oh look at this. Okay, so we do have to activate this one. Okay, so they are trying to sneak through in both directions. They're trying to sneak out on the um, the west side, and they're trying to sneak through the north side. So hopefully, with these two outposts, I have trapped them in there. Obviously, they could e they, if the AI gets smart, they could go this way. There are ways to do it, uh, but before once again, before you think that this is some brilliant idea, it costs a lot of resources. Every time I do that, I am losing. Three ammo, two fuel, and seventy-five parts. So it's it is an expensive strategy to keep going. Time? We could use some help over here. The 
see me soon. Uh, so he wants ammo. Do we have ammo in the back? We could like give the we can give them the ammo on the way back if so. Oh, we don't have ammo. Oh well. All right, back. All right, so movie night is done, and that means we can start doing training videos. So look at how high our morale is now. With all of the bonuses, we're doing pretty good. Okay, so the hope now is what we're hoping for is those outposts will hopefully hold the infestations back so that instead of having to constantly deal with them, hopefully now I can just do what I want to do. And hopefully that I can just play the game the way I want, using those to hold the infestations in. Now, if the strategy does work, I'm not saying that's good, because now it just means that I have to pay resources to pay to play the way I want to, which I think, once again, is crap. But we're trying different ideas. So apparently an infestation managed to sneak through. And I don't know where. Let's, um... I really hate wasting my fuel to find out where the infestations went, but... Actually, how about this? I can't because there's not enough infestations. Oh well, let's focus on one thing at a time. But once again, that's why, what would be the smart thing to do? The smart thing to do would not be to do what I'm doing. Like, what I'm doing is just kind of a test. What you should do is just kill the play guards because that is the source. You want to cut them off at the source. And the thing is, if my current strategy, if they're able to slip through it, then it's going to become too expensive. So even that won't be a good idea either. Because what if I need to build a third... What if I have to build a third outpost just to kind of keep this net? That would be nine ammo per day, uh, six fuel per day. Like, that is just, that, it's just not good. Like, I just, ugh. Fuel, food, materials, food. Oh, are we capped on food? Okay, we are almost capped on. We're basically capped on food. Yo, I'm home. The reserves are gonna start walking off if we don't build more storage. Nope, looks like they're. I, I put the food in, and now they're immediately gonna drop kick the food. I think. Let me see if I can save the food. I'm trying to save it. Okay, I might have saved the food. Yeah, it would be. That's exactly the case. It would be expensive. Okay, so, um, you know what? We're just gonna spend the, the... We're just gonna go ahead and spend the fuel. So let's go over here and locate the infestations. Are they gonna tell me? Do you, do you want to tell me where they are? Did they just take my my fuel and give me nothing? Did, did they just take my fuel and give me nothing? Wanna make this town safe? Oh! Kill those fucking plague hearts. Roger that. Red Taran will handle God, that was a waste of money. Hey, look who's up to mischief. Oh, let me see. Let's give them this ammo. What else do they need? Out. So, yeah, I know I know where the play guards are. I don't need to be told. I know, I know where they are. The welcome wagon. Don't care about that one. Now, 
Now we just lost 350 influence because I accidentally hit the wrong button. Let's find some stuff to sell. I'm gonna scrap these real quick. These, I would ra I'd rather have the parts than the influence for selling them. We can stay noisy or we can stay safe. Not both. Uh, we can install this. This is not really going to help us at all, but, uh, oh, no, I don't have the, um, I actually can't do that. I don't need two sanitization machines. Oh, those are worth a lot. I'll sell those. Okay, we need money. And we need to deliver ammo, so let's kind of, you know, two birds with one stone. And maybe they will have a good ally bonus as well. And I still don't know where the infestation was. I paid to know where the infestations are, and they're not telling me. So they just took my fuel and gave me nothing. A horde is moving towards Big Daddy Auto Repair. Okay, that's the one that I'm pretty sure got destroyed last time. I mean, in this game, you can't even go for the gun. Like, if you have a dispute at home, you, they don't give you the option to shoot people. Zombie crowds. Well, looks like we got a little bit of a fight on our hands here. Game geometry is not cooperating with me. I'm sorry, I can't keep up with you. Do I think it gave me a mission for the intel? I don't. I think it's just a glitch. I can. Ch I'll double check though. Okay, not bad guys. You took those zombies out pretty nicely. Okay, we'll give him the ammo. Let's see what our bonus is. Take care, kid. Movie and theater. Uh, so the intel is for the play guard, I'm pretty sure. What is this? Wait is deep. Oh, okay, we have to wait. Okay, so it's not instant anymore. We have to wait. Okay, so maybe we'll learn about its position after that thing ends. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do this. Of course. Okay, we can sell all of this stuff. 170 for, well, 85 influence each for pursuit mines. Very nice. Sanitization machine, torn page, and I'll take the fuel, of course. Macros, welcome back to the show. Also, what did we get? Infestations are growing into a real threat. Dinner and theater. That is a good one. So here is where they all are. They should not be able to get past there. I'm going to destroy this one, though. Yes, Mega. The early ar people have already claimed early game. So yes, these. Yeah, those guys got eaten up. Let's go over here and torch this infestation, though.
And once we take out this infestation, I believe there will be no way for them to get through. I think. I don't know. I don't know. That's the experiment. We're going to be trying it out. Screamer, walk soft. I get for driving and reading chat at the same time. Let's refuel. All of this work just to like, it's like all of this work just so that I can like loot in peace. Cause like, that's what I want to do right now. We need to rebuild our money. I want to go Nothing looting. While they're dealing with that, let me just go take out this guy. Okay, there's the bloater. This time, the screamer is somewhere else. I don't even know where the screamer is. Oh, there's the screamer. Okay, so this this one's toast. And so now, like I said, they should not be able to get through. Yes, yes, that's correct, Macros. The only play guards remaining are the ones inside Lundegaard, and what we hopefully have done, emphasis on hopefully, and that's the experiment of today's episode, hopefully we have created like an, uh, like an embargo, like we've embargoed Lundegaard, because um, what we've got here is one, two, three, four. We've got four left, and right here we've killed 24 out of 28, so these are the last remaining play guards in the entire area, and we're going to see... Uh, can we, in fact, blockade them in? Can we, like, create, like, an embargo? Now, if they're smart, they could go over here. Uh, we're just going to hope that they're not that smart, though. Yes, and there are grumpy butts who have chosen to live in a rather precarious location. I'm sorry, I can't keep up with you. Okay, let's let this character rest because he's injured. All right, so we've got another... another so this one should not be able to do it. Like, this one should be destroyed. Okay, we need to drive away. Well, I, I think it could be the armored zombie ruining everything. Plays Lopez. The armored zombie is unfortunately immune to damage. I'm hoping if I get away though that um, if the armored zombie literally can just walk through, then it totally defeats the purpose of the what do you call it? The system. Okay, let's let me see if driving away will cause him to die. It might, it might actually work. And that's because if I get far enough away, they may just become data. Data. And if they become data, okay, good. That did cause them to die. Now, here's another problem I have. What if these infestations keep getting worse? If that becomes the case, then I'm still going to be affected in terms of morale by it. Huh. Very strange. Anyways, let's go enact our plan. 
We're gonna go back over here and begin looting all of the play guards. Because that was the original plan. We killed those play guards, and now we're gonna take what is rightfully ours. And there should be plenty of resources in them. We can sell what we don't need, and it should be great. I better stay on my toes while I'm in plague territory. Also, we're on a clock in the sense that every day we're going to lose one rucksack of ammo, one rucksack Hello, of Darren. fuel, and about 150 parts. That's our tax now. We're taxed every day to hold these infestations back. So it's like... We've got to earn the money to get the resources, or we got to get the loot. Even stronger than the undead. Um, Orthos asked, "Do I keep my survivors after I complete legacies?" Typically, not. Sometimes I will keep select individuals, but most of the time I delete them. Took care of that. Uh, what do I look for? I usually look for people that have, like, powerful hero bonuses. As well as, like, good stats, as well as, like, a character model I like. Yep, taxes after the apocalypse. You thought you got away? No siree. Oh, wow. Clobbered her one. Oh. I can't even remember. It was that, that was Jimmy Minion, right? Pretty sure that was Jimmy Minion. Let me get into a choke point. Stamina. There we go. It's going to be tough for these zombies to break through my choke point. I can't catch my breath. Nothing okay. looking around here but the living. Took a little doing, but we got it. We'll probably have to make two trips because we're going to want to loot. Um, I That's think that was Jimmy Minion. I think. Now we have a nice outpost over here that we can use to drop off all this stuff and then we can continue looting, at least until we run out of rucksack space. Do I think that getting enclaves uh, killed mess up the bonuses? It shouldn't. It shouldn't do anything. As long as one of them is alive, it should be fine. I don't pick enclaves, uh, I just pick whoever I want. Like, as long as, uh, I will take whoever, whoever is convenient. This goes here, let's go ahead and maintain the vehicle. Yep, we need to refuel. We're burning through a lot of fuel, I kinda wanna switch to my driving character. Cause I don't like how much fuel we're burning through. Also, once again, we can keep this going. Now we can actually power level our characters up. Um, endurance? 
Now she is our driver. Drivers use less fuel, and that's what we need right now. Cause like I just I just do not like the speed at which we're tearing through our fuel. Also, she's got resourcefulness. Yeah, so that's gonna make looting a little bit easier because I've got these three pocket slots. That's actually really important for looting effectively. I mean, if somebody gets a really good hero bonus, then That's like, or uh, if I get a good enclave infected. bonus, I may not, um, I may not choose them. But if I have to, I will. Like, I will choose whoever is necessary. Did the impaler? Yeah, if the impaler got an extra slot, that would be nice. But alas, it is still the same old impaler. I see an infected feral. Let's get rid of this feral. Got him. Let me see if I can go loot what's her name real fast. Got it? That's what we came here for anyways. Tech Viper, how is it going? Welcome to the show. There's a juggernaut nearby. Um, let's drop that on. Juggernaut attacking doesn't really matter though. Juggernaut, not really that big of a threat in the game. Is there a drop in FPS? I am currently not experiencing one. Is anyone else getting a FPS drop? Uh, I am also watching the stream, and it's all smooth on my end, like, uh, like over here. I am also watching the stream. As you can see, it's all smooth over here. Okay, so, for everyone just now swinging by, the plan is this. This is the plan. We are trying to see if we can box in these remaining play guards so that they cannot get their infestations through. As you can see, there's, here's an infestation trying to sneak through. And there it goes. So it is being destroyed by the outpost. And what I'm hoping is that by boxing these in, by confining these, can I finally just loot at in peace? Can I finally just play the game the way I would like to play the game? And we are going to see how effective it is. It is a costly strategy, though, because I do have to pay resources to keep those... This isn't going to open. To keep those traps going. Those traps are not free. In fact, we we lose one rucksack of ammo, one rucksack of fuel, and 150 parts per day doing this. Throw this in. Um, ring a ding ass, it's just infestations, right? Zombies can still spawn elsewhere? Yes. It's only blocking the regular zombies. Yeah, that also doesn't count the fact that I have destroyed most of the play guards in the game. Like, there's only four left, and I have boxed them into that location. There we go. Oh, I am being burned. Okay, yeah, one of our outposts are up here as well. So they're also destroying things. Training is complete. Let's keep the training rolling. Looks good. No more zombies. Look at that. Love seeing these come up. Uh, marathon and close combat. That's pretty heavy. Never mind, let me re-equip that.
continue dropping this stuff off. I still have more room in my car, and then I can also swap some of these off to different characters if necessary. So I still have other options for maintaining my inventory. Damn, I can't jump through the window. So we have another horde trying to sneak through, but once again, we do have the this on embargo. And the only reason I was able to do this is, like I said, I have destroyed all of the other play guards in the game so that they cannot appear anywhere else. That's a lot of stuff. Look how fast they're just being machine gunned down. Like, this is the aggression that you can expect in the new beta update. Like, look, they are literally just being cranked out. That's the reason why I told people that, the in this case, the best defense is a good offense. Like, I don't actually think using the outpost to hold the zombies back is necessarily a good idea. The good idea is just to kill the play guards, cut them down at the source. Let me see if I can quick ninja loot this. That's I can. Heavy. <laughs> if I were to expand it further, would it kill those infestations? Possibly. I'll, I'll give it a try. If we can, if we can um, increase the range even further, I'll, I'll give it a try. Um, which outpost is it? It is outpost number three. Does this give it more range? It doesn't look like it. This does not expand the range. It just acts as a lure, and we don't need to use it as a lure because um, it's just in the way. So we can't expand the range of it. And even, what about upgrading it? Will upgrading the outpost... It doesn't look like it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what Undead Labs is. Um, I mean, I can. I can speculate at what they're thinking. They're probably thinking that this is just going to be a really like. Oh, it'll be fun for players to have to grapple with this like system. It'll be kind of like a, a back and forth conflict between the play guards and the. Um, and the survivors, but the problem is that there's no reward for it. Like, that's the main problem. Like, the, one of the big problems with State of Decay is that it has just bad rewards. Like, players need to be rewarded for their efforts. Like, that is one of the most basic aspects to a video game, is being rewarded for your efforts. Not empty. Well, wonders keepers. Oh, I thought I could get him there. Oh well, I'll just run him. I didn't want to do that because the pyro launcher is a noisy weapon. But I'll do it. Also, I need to get rid of my axe. Grab all the stuff. A lot of stuff. So the traps last the whole day. They do. So basically, we're on like a. Basically, we gotta make sure that we're earning enough money per day to replenish our daily losses. That's one of my goals. Let's keep training. Oh, I love to see the training. The lounge is so good.
and let's put my axe back. Okay, so we are currently at our cap there. Let me see if we can call in more allies. So what we need to do now is start changing characters. Drop this on the floor. Huh. All right, Seth, it's your turn to grab something and make it be useful. So another way we can um, carry more rucksacks is I can just change characters like this. And then what I will do is just switch to each character now. And I will go ahead and grab a, uh, a rucksack out of the back and transfer them home that way. Just another way that we can sneak a few more inventory slots without having to completely go back to base to dump this stuff off. Wolf says he's got to go to ba go back to work. Man, that's a bummer. Have a good one, man. Hope your day at work goes well. I got this. Shouldn't take me too long to get there. Clock's ticking, so how about you get right over here? Grab it. Normally I don't like to do this, and that's because I often forget that my characters have rucksacks. But, whatever. So far I would say our embargo strategy is succeeding, more so than it is not. Okay, so that cleans up our rucksack inventory, and now we can claim more. It's the little things. The, the, little, the little strategies add up over time. And, man, there's still so much here. Yeah, they keep trying to sneak through, but it's, it's, not, it's not really working for them. Over here, we've got a pretty high level infestation here it's got two screamers two ferals a juggernaut and a bloater so like i said a, a fairly hardened infestation there wallerman welcome back to the show Another empty one. Maybe I can ninja loot it. <laughs> I'm so exhausted. See you, zombies. Heath Hame with 200 bits. Thank you so much, good sir. And uh, we're almost done with this area. I mean, we're looting pretty efficiently, but, you know, there's just so much to grab. And like I said, this is all from the Destruction Derby last episode. Like, last episode, I just, like, got so fed up with the infestations that I just went on, like, a crazed rampage, just murdering all of the Plague Guards to get rid of them. And so that's why there's so many destroyed Plague Guards here. I think I killed nine of them in, like, 15 minutes. Which isn't even that fast, honestly. I could go a lot faster if I brought proper equipment. But I was still using just like whatever I could find off of the map. So what do you guys think of infestations right now? Like that That's going to be my question of the day. It's probably going to be the question of the day for a few streams in a row, to be honest. Because like right now, it's all about infestations. That's so question of the day heavy. for State of Decay 2. 
What do you think about infestation? I guess all the like, other you zombies think that are they are a, uh, what, what kind of role do you think infestations play in State of Decay? That is my question of the day. And what do you think about this update? Now that you're seeing it more, I know that not everybody has access to the Steam beta. So, you know, you guys kind of have no choice but to, like, just await, probably with trepidation. Uh, Ricebox answers the question today. He says, slower timer. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Um, Tech Viper says, infestations are now ass in a cup. I don't even want to play my beta session now. Um, I gotta say, like, this is probably the least fun I've had in a State of Decay before. Like, I, I, this is probably, out of all the playthroughs I've done, this is probably the playthrough I've had the least fun in. Even some of my hardcore playthroughs, like no pyro launcher, fresh start, no impaler, no boons, fifth skill quirks only, so quirk skills like music. Even my most hardcore playthroughs were still quite enjoyable. Like this is the first playthrough that I'm just, I'm honestly not having a lot of fun. Up we go, let's go around. Let's close the door. Maybe I can sneak in and grab the loot. Yes, I can. That's pretty heavy. And let's drop this one off. Alright, so what are you guys saying? Deadly Nightshade says that he hates infestations and he wishes they were not in the game. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, so do I. Um, infestations are an old mechanic. They've been in the game since State of Decay 1. They have never been fun since State of Decay 1. Like, they, infestations have never been fun. Something that really pisses me off about Undead Labs is they get feedback that people want less infestations because like they cranked it up. People want less infestations, and what pisses me off about them is they 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 crank it up like six times higher. Like that's something that really pisses me off about them, especially for a company that says that they listen to their fans. Let's get this one now. So it seems like the strategy is working. And, uh, you know, some people will say, oh, well, this is what you're supposed to do. You need to adapt your strategies. Why? Why should I need to adapt my strategies to a bad idea? It's like, I mean, I'll, I'll have no choice, but I mean, I'm not even gonna use this outpost strategy. If the, if the update goes live, if I just have to play like this for the rest of State of Decay 2, uh, one thing I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna use the outpost. I'm just gonna speed run through the play guards because like, that's what they really are telling me to do. There we go. That's a lot of stuff. Okay, I think we are finally, like, literally at the limit of what we can do for loot. But the good news is we are also, um, we also looted most of the play guards. Let's go. That, that's absolutely the case, Burnstone. Like, you don't get anything for killing the infestations. And, uh, bef you know, the original infestations, they were not fun. But at least 
they spawn maybe once every 45 to 50 minutes. Like, you, you would get a pretty long break in between killing them. God, like, now they just are, like, all up in your grill. Like, my thoughts on the issue is that Undead Labs, they should not be focusing on something like Infestation. Like, basically, my thoughts on State of is that the game is hard enough. Why is the game hard enough? Very few people can beat Lethal Zone. Like, the game doesn't need to... Basically, there's a small cadre of people who have fully adapted to Lethal Zone, and Lethal Zone is no longer a problem for them. Those are not the people that you should be adjusting the game for. Like, you should not be adjusting the game for like, not even 1% of your audience, like basically a half percent of your audience. You should not be making the game harder just because there are a handful of people who are like, wow, this game is too easy. Like what they should be focusing on is adding more fun interactive content, like more facilities, new skills. They should go back and rebalance the bad skills, the skills that people don't use, like craftsmanship. They should go back and rebalance craftsmanship to make it more appealing like those are the things that they should be doing in order to revitalize the game more item craft absolutely i think that would be that that would be a great idea Maybe they should redesign some of the old bases. Some of the old bases that are a little bit generic, where they're kind of like, they feel just like any other base. So we, what we got to do is unload our um, the cargo from the other characters now. Is maybe they should go back and revise some of the old bases that are just kind of on the generic side. Like, there's so many things that Undead Labs could be doing instead of, like, trying to, like, basically shit the game up with a mechanic that, like, the vast majority of people don't want. Apparently I'm stuck, I'm captured by this chair. Ah, sweet. It let me out. I know we still need to scavenge. Sometimes burn everything in a five mile radius. Why does he we need to burn everything in a five mile what what is he talking about? If you're hearing this, get over here and help. We're getting killed. Somebody needs help, apparently. Well, maybe Hello, I'll help you once I done, once I'm done unloading all this stuff. Who needs help? Stay cool. Oh. Help's coming. Trying to help everyone's just gonna get us killed. Okay, so I think. Oh, we got skills. Um, powerhouse and scouting, assault, backpacking, resourcefulness. Love that combo. Um, powerhouse. Assault. Very nice. Okay, so now we've got plenty of building materials. We can definitely build something nice. I really do fit in here. Dungeon style missions. Yeah, I agree. That would be awesome. Like, what if you went to an apartment complex and then you could go inside the apartment complex and fight some battles and find like loot inside of the apartment complex? Like, I think that would be that would be a great idea. That would be awesome. Like, people have some great ideas. Like, that's something that I love about the State of Decay fan base is that the fan, but the fandom has. A lot of great ideas, but those are not the ideas that are being listened to right now. I'll put it that way. Okay, let's go get this last plague art. We'll finish. We're gonna finish the job. We're gonna like. We're gonna make like Master Chief and finish the fight. I kind of want that Vandito. I know there's a Vandito somewhere. Like we're we're not done yet with certain things. Like where there's still more things to test. Like I want to get the Vandito. 
And I know how to do it too. I'll trade I'll trade vehicles. But for now, no need for that. First time chat from that damn wizard. He says about a higher tier of skills. Oh, what well, yeah, what what if we could upgrade facilities further? What if they came what if they came out with that's because that's, that's a good idea. What if they came out with new, new tiers of technology would be fantastic. What if they, what if you, yeah, what if they added a third specialization of skills? Or what if you could upgrade certain buildings to level four? What if they added a new type of facility slot? Extra big. So you had small, large, and then huge facilities. It's like, I don't know, there's just so much that they could do. That would be fun, and it would be interesting, and you could play the game in like an interactive and way where you're building up towards something rather than harrying people with these infestations, because that's really what it feels like. I mean, one of my problems with State of Decay is I don't really like their facility system in general. When you compare State of Decay to its competitors, other zombie hey, games, other zombie crafting here. survival games, none of those games have limited sized this bases. So They're always games where you can build the most ridiculous, just redonkulous, as big of a base as you want. And what you're limited by is a combination of your imagination and your resources. And if you have those in supply, then the sky's the limit. You can basically design whatever you want, and that's awesome. Like, um, and also there's an engineering aspect to it as well. Like, take seven days to die, for example. Uh, it's in the name of the game. You have seven days to die. So every seven days, you get attacked by a gigantic zombie siege. And that's a really big part of the game because a, a huge objective is to engineer your own zombie fortress like are you gonna build barbed wire are you gonna fill up a moat and try to like get the zombies trapped in the moat are you gonna build um machine gun turrets or shotgun turrets are you going to build a bunch of improvised wooden stakes to stab the zombies while you throw molotovs at them it's up to you do you want to build trap doors that open up and drop the zombies into a pit it's up to you like you have to engineer your own zombie fortress and i think that's a big thing that state of decay is missing because you can't build defenses and building defenses is a big part of the zombie oh whoa whoa okay if you say so if you say so. Don't know what happened there, but you know what? That, that's fine. Evie, welcome to the show. If you're looking for Seven Days to Die, we'll be playing it pretty soon. But, like, right now, I, I guess I gotta get back into the game now that it crashed. Let's see where it whisked me off to. Yeah, I agree with that, Liquid Courage. One of the things that I think State of Decay doesn't capitalize on is the idea that you've got manpower, you've got people, and you can send them out to do things. I think that's like a big Attack missed yesterday. opportunity with the game. If you're listening, we need help right now. Oh, good. That quest reset, so that means we can actually kill those grumpy butts for free. <laughs> Undead Lands is listening and crashed my game. At least nothing bad happened. Like, for example, I've been playing a lot more colony simulators lately. I've been playing, like, RimWorld, for example. And um, one of the things that's neat, because although State of Decay isn't RimWorld, it does share some similarities. And one of the similarities it shares is that they are both games where you have a labor force. And a big part of the game is assigning your labor force to do tasks. Uh, let's get this going. And let's go ahead and doctor up the vehicle. And that's something that I wish you could do more in State of Decay is like have projects that your community can work on. And yes, you can build up the base and whatnot, 
But I don't know. It just feels like a right very now. that's like the minimum thing that you're expecting. Like, like that's like the bare minimum of a community project you'd be expecting. Training videos done. Get some more. Uh, let's let's actually watch Xbox first. We got to restore our morale apparently. Also, let's get a little more fuel. Because we are going to go complete. This quest should kill those grumpy butts. Tech Viper asks, have I tried Stranded Alien Done? It's RimWorld in 3D. It's in Early Access? That sounds like it could be fun. I uh, Would you mind text, text me that on um, Discord? Because like, I, I am always looking for the next game that I want to play. One of the games I am interested in is uh, there's another zombie game coming out. And what they're going to do in the zombie game is... Apparently they're going to use like Google Maps or something to but simulate possible, actual cities and whatnot. So you should theoretically be able Fucking to find awesome. your own town in the world and play the zombie game literally in your own town. And I'm like, that sounds pretty cool. And it sounds like it's going to be a fairly strategic game. But yes, RimWorld is a ton of fun. And like I said, I wish... It's like, okay, here's something that State of Decay needs to do. State of Decay is kind of like in the middle. It's in between an action game and a simulation game. A zombie simulation in this case. The problem is that I feel like it needs to lean a little more in one way or another. It doesn't matter to me which direction it goes. I feel like it either needs to lean more towards an action direction and have better combat and more interesting combat, or it needs to lean, lean more into a simulation direction and have more community management, base building, managing like resources and stuff like that. I don't. It doesn't matter to me which way. I think they both could be quite fun. But my problem is that when it goes like half and half, it's half of a simulation. Well, the simulation is a little bit shallow. That's the problem. The simulation is, it's shallow. Uh, also, like another example would be the action. Yes, the action is competent. The action gets the job done. But it definitely doesn't feel like a real action game. Because it's only half of an action game. And I think that's like something that Undead Lambs needs to consider. And it's like, it's not like you get a variety. It's not kind of like, well, you know, if it's half and half, so I kind of get like a half of a simulation experience and I get half of an action experience. I don't really think you get that. Because like I said, I've played a lot of awesome simulation games that are a ton of fun. And um, I, I don't really, I don't feel like even it has half the complexity of a full simulation type of game. Same with action games. Like I have played my share of action games and I don't really feel like I'm getting half of the experience of an action game. And like, so, and there are just things, there's just fundamental things that I would expect from the game that I don't see them doing. Like one example is, um, they don't add any new zombies. Why, why, you know, if you're building this action game where you're gonna fight against these different kinds of zombies, um, why don't you make any new zombies? In fact, there are no new zombies even between State of Decay 1 and 2, if you want to get right down there. Oh, looks like you jumped right on me there. That's fine. We well, got plenty of health. All right, so these grumpy butts have been cleared out by the quest, so I don't even have to fight them, which is awesome. And, you know, like, people will mistake oh, me and they suck. think they'll, they'll be like, Oh, I'm man, Fox, you're just hating on the game. It's really just the opposite. Like, here's what I see. And, I, and I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. And, 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 you know, like, a lot of people... That's maybe it's just heavy. because I think about this more deeply. But, like, here's the thing. The reason I need... I, I, I don't just want... I need the game to be good. Because the better the game is, the more people want to play it. And the more people who want to play it, the more people who come to my channel. So it's like there is absolutely a symbiotic relationship between the success of State of Decay and myself. So I, I would... Uh, I have a hundred... You know, people will describe me as someone who's just hating on the game. That's just not the case. Like, I am trying to point out, like... Hey, Undead Labs, 
I am a normal, everyday gamer. Like, I, I am not... I, I don't have a silver spoon in my mouth. I am a normal, everyday gamer. And as a normal, everyday gamer, like, th this is what I would want in a game. Let's drop this stuff off. Yeah, Stellaris is amazing. Stellaris is great. And it's like, okay, y okay, Stellaris is another good example. Like, why can't, okay, in Stellaris, you can be evil. Why can't I be evil in State of Decay? In RimWorld, you can be evil. Why can't I be evil in State of Decay? Like, why, I mean, I'm guessing it's because Undead Labs is kind of, well, it might be socially un unacceptable. Like, why can't I capture people and build, like, a torture chamber and electrocute them until they give me the rebel plans? Like, why can't I make the, I, I want to make the Wilkersons look like good guys, because I think it would just be hilarious content. And then, like, what if you could capture people and build a torture chamber, like an interrogation room, and then you could shock uh, what do you call it, enclaves, and then terrorize them, and then people won't oppose you because they're like, God, I don't want that to happen to me. What if instead of having to do quests for enclaves, what if you could oppress people instead and demand that they give you resources instead of always having to suck up to them and just give them an arm and a leg? It's like, why can't I do that? That, that would be, the, those are the kinds of things that, like, damn, that would make, I, I think that, um, I think that would be super fun. I would love to do that in State of Decay. Like, I, I would be like, this, I would do the most trollish things you've ever seen. Like, it's like, why can't I build a fight pit, abduct enclaves, and make them fight each other when they want food. Like, oh, you want food from me? Very well. You know, meet me here at my base and I'll give you food. And then I capture them all and have them fight each other un until, and then whoever wins gets the rucksack of food. Why, why can't I do that in the game? Like, that, that that's the kind of simulation that I would want in State of Decay. It'd be absolutely hilarious. Okay, let's see here. Like, why can't I go to an enclave that I don't like? What if, okay, what if you had um, a new skill? Like, let's say this was stealth. And what if I had a new fifth skill called, like, psychology or something? And so one of your skills would be, like, interrogation. And if you combine it with stealth, what if you could infiltrate an enemy enclave, a hostile one, and then, like, abduct one of them, drug them, take them back to your enclave, and then, like, ransom them back to their original team and basically be like, oh, if you don't pay me two rucksacks of building materials, then... We are going to torture your friend to death. And then you videotape it and send it to them. Like, oh, do you want... Like, this is on your head. You could just give me two rucksacks of building materials. And I wouldn't be forced to shock this person to death. The choice is yours. It's like, why can't I do that? Like, that would be... That, I would, that would be hilarious. I would love doing stuff like that. Um... Or it's like, what if you could, like, take somebody and then brainwash them? Put them in the interrogation chamber and brainwash them, and then they become, like, your secret agent, and you can have them infiltrate other enclaves, and you can find out, like, what their motives are. Or maybe you could reveal an enclave's hero bonuses or their, their enclave bonuses before you decide if you want to invest in them. And so you could send your agent out to infiltrate people to get reconnaissance. And then you could decide, oh, yeah, you know, I do want these guys. Or maybe you don't want these guys because it would give you it would be an interactive way to gain knowledge that you're not normally not available for but what if you had a guy who is a master of interrogation and his ability one of his abilities is that when you see other enclaves or other survivors he can just see their traits so you can tell if they have a bad trait because basically as an interrogator he's a master of like interacting with other humans like he knows like what makes them tick and he's able to pick up on their their personality quirks and he would be able to tell what their traits are he would be able to tell you what their hero bonus is going to be he would be able to tell you if there is a hidden trait and like what if you had an interrogation room and you can basically like Maybe you could get, like, maybe the opposite side of him. You've got an interrogator, and then the opposite person would be, like, a psychologist. And the psychologist can sit people down 
and basically be like, why is it that you are afraid of bees? And he's like, oh, I, 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 they stung me as a kid. And, and he could talk with them about why they're afraid of bees. And then after about a few days, they lose that negative trait. And all of a sudden, they're not afraid of bees anymore. Or, you know, like, if there's someone who causes fights, maybe you can spend time with the psychologist and he's able to help them get past their problems and cure certain negative... Yeah, obviously, if you've got, like, a bad back, you wouldn't be able to cure that. If you've got smoking lungs, then you wouldn't be able to cure that. But there should be certain traits that you could scrub and get rid of by having, like, a psychologist, and that would be the fifth skill. That would be awesome. Like, those are the kinds of changes that I think people would absolutely love in State of Decay. Yeah, that's worth a pat on the back. Okay, so I'm going to show you something. Like, this is what I noticed. This is what I'm concerned about. Let me get my internet browser. So let's go take our butts over to Google Trends. Google Trends. Okay, so we're here at Google Trends. Let's type in State of Decay. State of Decay 2. Okay, so what this is going to tell us is this line tells us how many people are typing in State of Decay into Google. If there's a jump, that means something happened. If there is a drop, that means people are stopping. They're not caring. Like, they're not interested in it. So let's go ahead and uh, increase the range, because this is like a year or two. Let's make it the past five years. Okay. So now you can see here. Now you might say, what is this giant spike right here? Why, why, why is the world going bananas? Why is the world losing their mind? And everyone is just like, State Decay 2, State Decay 2, because this is launch day. This is launch day for State of Decay 2. So it makes sense, right? Now, what happened over here? Uh, I believe this is the Steam. Steam re-release, Juggernaut Edition. But what you can see is that for as much as it goes up, and yet here's a, here's a little bigger spike, notice that it just returns back to normal. What this tells you is stagnant. It's stagnant. It means that it is not growing. It is not getting more popular. Yes, there are increases of interest, but it goes back to normal. It is not, you, you would think it would slowly trend upwards. Let's compare it to some of State Decay's competitors. Seven days to die. And so you can see here, let's go ahead and, uh, at one, you can see that Seven Days to Die is a similarly aged game. You can see here that Seven Days to Die tends to be more popular. Let's look in the more recent time, though. Let's look in the last year. So if we look in the last year, actually, let's go two years. Can we go two years? Custom time range. From 2021 to now. Okay. Okay, so this is from 2021 until now. And actually, let's just go, let's go f three years. 2020. Okay, so this was, this is what I was looking for. So as we go back, what you will see is that in the earlier graph, State of Decay always returns to kind of a normal level. Yes, it has spikes in popularity, but then it returns back to the normal level, and it's stuck there. State of Decay is stuck there. That's why I'm concerned about the game. Now, notice that the trend for Seven Days to Die is, yes, it does return to a normal level, but notice that the, the normal level is getting higher. Like, this is becoming more the normal level. This is higher than this. Notice that this is higher than that. It means that as the years go by, yes, there are bursts of interest, but it is growing in popularity. The game is showing signs of growth. Let's add another competitor, State of Decay. Project Zomboid. So now, 
we've got three. Now you can see over here, State of Decay was actually more popular than Project Zomboid. More popular, comparable, more popular, more popular, more popular. But look at this humongous spike. And do you see what happened? There was a big spike. And yes, people lost interest, but it's not as high. It didn't drop down to this level. It kept its fans. And look, it is, it is showing signs of getting more popular. Same with Seven Days to Die. Seven Days to Die is showing signs that it is growing in popularity, whereas State of Decay is not. Let's go back to um, five years. And so once again, now that, you've, now that we've zoomed all the way out, you can see that although State of Decay had a humongous, like crazy, like this is like a hundred times the popularity, like a hundred times more search results here. That's what that means. So like basically to interpret the data, um, State of Decay was like a hundred times more searched for than Project Zomboy. But you see, it comes back down. And the reason for it, and that's why like, I, I don't think that my thoughts are opinions. I think that this comes from informed data. And it tells me that Undead Labs updates, and I know this might be painful to hear, but I'm going to say it anyways. Undead Labs updates are misguided. They do not win fans. That's why I'm critical of the game. Because I look at these trends, and what I see is, despite the, um, let me go ahead and remove these again. I am critical of State of Decay because I look at these trends. I see a spike, and then it goes back to normal. I see a spike, goes back to normal. Spike, back to normal. Spike, back to normal. Spike, back to normal. It's not showing signs of growth. And why, what does that mean to me? It means that... Yes, when an update comes out, people are like, oh, let me check out that new update. Then they look at the update, and they're like, oh, this is boring. I don't want to do this. The game hasn't changed at all. I'm playing something else. That's what it tells me. That's why I am trying to get Undead Labs to reconsider this infestation update, because this is not the update that is going to cause them to win fans. It's not going to bring people back. Like, look, if this right here, if the Steam release eventually petered out from what, like um, March 2020 to October 2020. So, so in what, like a, a span of like five months, all of the people that came back went away again. That's the problem. And that's why I'm critical of the game. Not because I hate the game. Not because I'm just bashing Undead Labs. Don't forget, I am tied to this game as well. When this game does well, I do well. When this game does poor... I do poor. I am tied to this game. So, of course, I'm not hating on the game. And that is, uh, that's why I do it. And that's also why I completely reject the idea when people would say, oh, this is just your opinion. Well, yes, in the literal sense, these are just my thoughts on the matter. My thoughts aren't random, though. My thoughts come from looking at analytics. My thoughts come from listening to what you guys say. My thoughts are not random. And that's, I think, that's the big thing that I wanted to point out there. And, um, yeah, I mean, I can see why. I can see, like, you know, I'm playing Seven Days to Die. I can see why people are so excited about it. I'm excited about it. Like, their updates... Like, if you heard about the updates that are happening in Seven Days to Die, you would be, like, frustrated. You would be like, damn, that's what I want in... Like, okay, you want to know what they're doing in Seven Days to Die? They are adding in a revamp to their armor system so that, like, their armor looks cooler. You can modify your armor to make it more effective against zombies. They are changing the way their one of their melee systems work because they have spears in the game. And so they are enhancing the spears to be more effective with new power attack animations. Like, they are going to be uh, adding in bandits who roam the area to, like, uh, rob you and then maybe you can negotiate with them. They are adding in a lot of cool things that you're like damn that's what I wish happened in State of Decay 2 but anyways enough harping on the issue I think I have uh, made my point that is our two-hour stream though I would say our experiment was successful we were able to use those outposts to embargo the enemy 
and as a result of embargoing the enemy, we were able to loot and do things our way. However, it does come at quite the cost. Uh, we are basically spending 150 parts, 6 ammo, and 4 fuel per day, which is not unbearable. Like, I can certainly finance it, but it's not cheap. So, that's kind of like, those are my current thoughts about it. Overall, uh, I want to, like, look, I, I would love to be happy about updates, but the truth is, I'm playing it, and I think you all agree, I'm not having a difficulty with it. Like, it, it's not my lack of skill. It's not that I need to get good, as some people claim. I just don't like it. It's, I don't think it's fun. I am not having as much fun with this playthrough as I was having in previous playthroughs. And it's because I have to constantly stop doing what I want to do, which is what State of Decay was all about. Remember, the slogan... Maybe you guys forgot the slogan of State of Decay... That is the slogan for State of Decay. Let me see. Let me go right here. This is the slogan of State of Decay right here. State of Decay 2, when it came out, it asked the question, How will you survive? Why does it ask that? Because the concept of State of Decay 2 is, Hey, the zombies are here. You're in the middle of it. What are you going to do? What decisions will you make to survive? In other words, State of Decay 2 is about a open world sandbox zombie survival simulation. It's all about, hey, you're here. It's up to you to find your way to survive. And what these awakening play guards do, they exert so much pressure on you that they tell you that, no, it's not about how you want to survive. It's just about doing what is effective right now. Which right now, the effective thing to do is to just cut out the play guard, kill the cancer at its source before it spreads. You know, if the, um, if the outposts are like the chemotherapy and whatnot, stuff that suppresses the cancerous material, that isn't really the cure. Like, yes, that can extend your life. Like, yes, that can diminish the cancer, but it's still there. The key is that you have to physically remove it, and that's what this update says. Like, if you want to just kind of be stealthy and chill and loot and not interact, well, too bad. They're going to wake up anyways. Uh, does a quest appear on the other side of the map in a, a, a nearby town? Well, you probably shouldn't do it because one screamer screams and bam, you've awakened all of them. And if you awaken all of them, it is going to be a mess because remember, the plague hearts cluster together. So even if you kill one of them, it'll probably wake up the two nearby ones. And when you kill one of them, it'll awaken another one nearby like a domino effect. So if you screw up even once, the plague hearts do not go back to sleep. You'll have to deal with it. And as a result, I don't like it. And I encourage anyone who also does not like it to tell Undead Labs. Like, I think Undead Labs could make some much better updates to the game if they focus their efforts elsewhere. I, I don't think infestations are the right way to go. I, do, I don't think... I think they are not on the right track to a good idea. I think they are on the wrong the track to a wrong idea. And like I said, by looking at the Google trends, I I, I, I don't even think I don't think it's gonna cause any blip in their trends. Like, I don't think this update is going to win people back. I think what it will do is push people away. Anyways, I wanna thank everybody for tuning in today. Quick announcements. Once again, if you would like to uh, catch any of the prior episodes, just go to the VODs link right here, and you can see all of the previous episodes. Um, so we are you're currently watching episode 8. Episode 8 will be up tomorrow. I typically upload them overnight. And uh, Seven Days to Die is there. Also, if you want to see um, this playthrough here, each playthrough has a different thumbnail. So this one has, like, the crossed-out... Um, Pyro Launcher, the crossed out, you know, uh, Chevy Impala. So, you know, it means no Pyro Launcher, no Impaler. And um, I will give them all a different thumbnail as well as the episode title there so that you can, so that, you know, you know which one that you're watching. 
Uh, in addition to that, I am on TikTok and Instagram now. Uh, they're very cool. You can catch a glimpse into my life. And my TikToks are all about mainly tip videos for State of Decay, funny moments in State of Decay, um, news, like quick news for State of Decay. And um, that's, that's basically what I'm posting. Also, do you want to join the Daybreak Legion? If so, join the Discord. I am creating a Daybreak group. Actually, not creating. I already have a Daybreak group. Uh, let me collapse all these and go right here. So the little nice little sunny face here for Daybreak. And what I got is every day I update this list for people who are trying to find Daybreak matches. These are people who want to unlock more stuff. And then over here, these are people who've completed their collection and are willing to help people learn how to play Daybreak. I'm trying to do whatever I can to help you guys out to, like, you know, facilitate matchmaking and also get people who are willing to learn. Like, even if you get your ass kicked, sometimes you got to get your ass kicked a few times. And you'll, you'll get people who you get your ass kicked once and they bail on you. They never have a chance to learn and you never get a chance to have your, your strategy synergy together. So you could join. Um, once you join, all you got to do is go to verify. You click this little green button once to verify yourself, and then you can accept the State of Decay role. Once you accept the State of Decay role, then you can be added to the Daybreak team. And if it gets more popular, it is growing in popularity, I will create a custom Daybreak Legion with veterancy levels and everything. Uh, the veterancy will be no joke either. I will personally test you. Like when you attempt to get a promotion, I will go into a Daybreak game with you and I will not help you at all. I will just be there as a witness and um, if you pass the test, then you'll be get this like prestige status within, but uh, within the community. Of course, like I said, I'm waiting to see if Daybreak will become a bit more popular before I commit to something like that. Anyways, once again, thank you all for tuning in. If you want to stay tuned, in about 15 to 20 minutes, I will be on 7 Days to Die. And if you want to see more State of Decay 2, come back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. I stream Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, two hours a day, starting at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. That is GMT minus five until Daylight Savings Time hits, but I will certainly update it then. Anyways, follow me on Twitch so you know when I go live next. And of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.